Hey friends, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Meg and in today's video we are doing a makeup tutorial for your fall family photos or any pictures that you're gonna be having taken this fall, which I know a bunch of us do that, or any events that we have coming up this fall and holiday season. Having a really great solid event and photo makeup routine on lockdown is gonna really be helpful for our full calendars, our full schedule, and things that we're gonna be out socializing. We're going to need our makeup to last all night. You're gonna want to stay tuned to this tutorial. I'm gonna give you so many tips and tricks. I've created this look for you today that I am going to wear for my family photos. It's a nice neutral look, but you can play with the colors and do whatever you want with this. So if you are into that, you want to get a nice solid makeup routine for family photos, portraits, events, weddings, parties, you got it. This is the look, this is the tutorial you're gonna to wanna to watch. So stay tuned, but before you do, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future uploads and make sure to follow along on social media where I post a lot of attainable beauty content daily. So let's get started with this makeup tutorial that you are going to slay the fall and holiday season with all the stuff you got going on. Okay. Alrighty, let's get this makeup routine underway. Off camera, I did my skin prep, my SPF, and my brows. You wanna make sure that you are prepping the skin. It's so important, skincare, hydrating that under eye area with your moisturizer or an eye cream. I like to take just a tiny bit, like one drop of a facial oil that really preps that under eye area for me. Again, I do wear SPF. If it is a nighttime event, you don't have to do that especially if you're worried about flash photography and if something's going to flash back on you. Sunscreens I use don't typically flash back, but if that's a concern for you, you can skip that in the evening time. But if you are going to be exposed to the sun at all, you should wear sunscreen. And a lot of times when you're getting family photos done, you're, it's done in natural lighting. So sunscreen, like flashback is not even gonna matter. You might as well just use one. Okay, so skin prep is super important ready to go. So I'm going to share with you uh, obviously what I would do if I am going to have my photos done, like my family photos done. In fact, I'm just like a trial run for me in maybe what are we doing this in like two weeks? We're going to do ours. So let's go. For events, photos, when I want my makeup to last longer and look good for longer, I always go in with a gripping primer. The purpose of a gripping primer is for it to create kind of a sticky base and then it, the makeup sticks on top of it a lot easier and lasts a lot longer. Primer is not necessary if you are really great at skin prep and use a hydrating moisturizer, yada, yada, yada. But I like a gripping primer again and I will list everything in the description box, but this is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. Um, and you want to work quickly with this, so as soon as it starts getting sticky, you don't want it to get dry. But as soon as you start feeling that get a little sticky, a little tacky, that is go time with your foundation. There's like this window you have to work in. Otherwise, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. So I'm using the Tom Ford, it's ridiculously expensive, but I will chat about this in a second. Um, but what I do with my foundation is I just dot it around my face with my finger so I avoid using too much. My big philosophy with everything when it comes to makeup is to go in light layers because the more you put on your face, the more it has the ability to cake off. So I kind of use a mixture of spreading it with my fingers and using this brush from e.l.f., which of course I will list and link. And I use a stippling motion, which is like pouncing it against the skin like this and a little bit of circular motions to kind of buff that in as well. The stippling motion, which is this, that presses the foundation into the skin and the swirling kind of like spreads it out more. You definitely want to make sure you get that down onto your neck. And I used just a pump of this, you know, for special events and photos. Sometimes I use a little bit more because I want more coverage, especially like kind of in this area, just like that to really look flawless. If I use too much on the forehead, between the brows, in the hairline, it ends up getting cakey. But there we go. Okay, 
All right, I feel like that's perfect coverage. So let's talk about the foundation now that I got it on my face because I needed to work quickly. So I am using this ridiculously expensive foundation, but it's probably one of my favorite foundations I've ever found, and it is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Foundation. Don't let the matte words scare you too much. As you can see, there is a bit of natural radiance to this. It is an $89 foundation, which is honestly painful honestly i tried it for instagram like thinking okay i'm gonna hate this but i ended up loving it it's like one of my favorite foundations ever and it photographs amazing all the time i feel like i'm walking around with an instagram filter on when i wear this so if you're looking for a splurge item something that you just like you know what i'm gonna treat myself get this foundation if tom ford is not in your budget i totally get it a step down <laughs> is Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk. This is another foundation that photographs beautifully, like truly beautiful. Love this one. I figured I would spend a little time giving some recommendations for foundations for photos and events. Another one that is like a long time holy grail foundation is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. It stays in place really well, especially for events. Photos, it works really well, especially if you're gonna be outside. Um, you're, you know you're gonna sweat. This is a really great foundation. And then another high-end one that's not as expensive as Tom Ford is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. They re recently reformulated it. It's so nice. Um, it looks beautiful on camera. It's actually meant for camera. I think they formulated this for it to look really good on camera. So you can't really go wrong with this. And all of these work well for all skin types. I know a lot of people are kind of scared of the double wear that have dry skin, but I promise you if you mix it in, if you prep your skin with a hydrating primer and you just use the tiniest amount and like build it up, it really works well for a lot of different skin types. And because I know you guys are gonna want a drugstore option, I always like to give one for foundations. This one looks amazing on camera. This is the L'Oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation it wears really well i wore this in disney world in like may and it stayed on my face perfectly um it photographs really nicely it's really lightweight i think it's going to work for a lot of skin types so if none of those foundations are in your budget and you have to grab something from the drugstore grab this because it does provide medium buildable coverage you can get it full coverage if you want or you can share it out i really wanted to spend a second on foundations because i feel like that's you know, that's the canvas that we're gonna lay down to create such a beautiful look for photos and your skin is really, really important when you are doing photo and event makeup. So I wanted to spend a little extra time there, but let's just go ahead and move forward. I'm not gonna talk too much. The next item I will be doing is some color correcting. I use a $5 color corrector from LA Girl. As you'll notice, I mix high and low. We're gonna have an $89 foundation blended in with a drugstore makeup brush and then we're gonna use a five dollar color corrector on top of it so this is how i justify some of my things it's like you know what i have a super <laughs> a uh, bougie foundation, but I'm balancing it out with some of the other things that I use because I always mix high and low. So when I am covering my dark circles, this color corrector comes in a bunch of different shades. I use the peach one because the peach, I feel corrects my darkness. It's a little more bluer toned. It really co corrects that very well for me. If you have our super fair, fair skin, there's also a pinky toned one, like salmon toned one that I think is gonna work well for you. But what I do is I just tap it in with my finger. I don't want to blend too much of it out because I don't want to lose the coverage. I want to use less product but more coverage. I'm going to focus a lot on this skin you'll notice today. I just want to look flawless. And then this is a concealer I recently discovered that I just love so much. I I'm so impressed. This is the Catrice True Skin High Cover Concealer. I'm blown away by this. I feel like sometimes I don't even have to set it with a powder. I'm gonna look really closely though. So how I apply my concealer is I just put the tiniest amount. I, I feel like you don't need a lot of concealer. I just do this much. I'm gonna take my finger again, spread that out in the direction where I want it to go. So it's kind of in a lifting direction spread it out on my lids really get it up to the brow bone because this is also canceling out any um veins any any discoloration i have on my eyelids which i do have some 
that's getting rid of all of that for me with the concealer and also sort of acting as an eye primer for my eyeshadows, which you can definitely use an eye primer if you want, but this is enough for me. I do that with my finger and then I'm taking this little concealer brush I grabbed off of Amazon. I will of course link it and I just basically tap that product in. You notice I really did not use a lot of concealer. The point with concealer is not to abuse it. You're gonna notice that it just gives you the perfect amount of coverage and there's less creasing, less caking. Like I said, less is more. Go in light layers. The, le the less you do, the less that can fall off your face. If you feel like your skin, your nose, around the mouth, anything like that needs a little coverage, you know, go for it. I don't really feel like I need that much. I feel like my foundation is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for that for me, and my skin is in a really good place, but I just put a little on there, and you can just dab that in with your concealer brush. I've been doing something a little bit different to set the under eye area, like set my concealer under the eye. I typically use a triangle powder puff, which I didn't even bring out with me here today, but I've been doing something different like i just kind of did this on accident one time i wanted the lightest amount of powder application that i could possibly do and i ended up doing this and it worked so well and i'm like okay i'm gonna try i'm gonna keep doing this so what's super important to me is to let that concealer sit under the eye and sort of dry down as much as possible before i then put a dry powder on top of it because if you have a wet concealer and you're putting like a dry powder on top of that that is immediate like immediate cakeage. Same with my um, my base, like my foundation. I don't wanna immediately set that with a powder because I feel like when it's super wet, it looks more cakey. So I let the concealer sit under the eyes for a minute and then I'm gonna go in with my powder shortly. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've let the concealer and foundation sit a while and then I'm taking the sponge, it has been Run under this like under the sink dampened and then I take a towel and try to squeeze as much water out of it as possible I do not want this sponge to feel wet at all. It's going to disrupt the makeup So I'm just really tapping in anything That could have caked or creased or whatever and then here's my unique under eye setting technique that I have been doing lately so I'll take Whatever powder that I wanna do for the, for the day, this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. I really like it because there's a slight natural sheen to it that's not glittery, it's just like super healthy looking. I dip my finger in it, and then I sort of like press the fing my forefinger and my thumb together, and then I press that on the under eye. Have you guys ever seen anybody do this? Like, I don't know, I just tried this one day when I was doing a super minimal look with my finger, cause I'm like really working that powder into the skin on my finger and then I'm pressing on the under eye. I don't know what prompted me or what compelled me to do that, but I feel like my under eye area has never looked better from doing this little random thing that I just started doing. And I'm using such little powder. And then for like the eyelid itself, I'll just like, dip a little of my powder onto that concealer brush and sort of get the eyelids. But like I like I said, you know, I'm literally dipping my finger, my my pointer finger in, rubbing it with my thumb and then just like pressing it. So I have the least amount of powder under there as possible but still getting like that to set. With this particular concealer, I feel like I don't need a lot of powder either. Like sometimes I'll just wear it without setting with powder. And that is crazy to me. We're gonna move on to the rest of the face. I'm gonna do a little bit of cream bronzer. This is, I just opened up a second one of this. I love this so much. This is the Rare Beauty Cream Bronzer Stick. This is in the shade Happy Soul. It's a very neutral toned bronzer. And one tip with a cream bronzer is to just tap your brush into this and then start tapping onto the skin for more of a diffused bronze. Um, Cause sometimes if you feel like, you know, you draw the stick around your face, it can end up looking, you know, muddy, not super blended. If you just do this and start rubbing that, you know, in the, cheekbone area, around the hairline, and then I do the jawline, and then I kind of drag it down. 
I also kind of get my ears. <laughs> this is kind of a random tip. Get your ears so your ears don't like stand out as like super white, <laughs> like contrasting to your bronzer. Random tip, but it helps. See, we just warm the skin up just a little bit. Here's where I actually draw it on my face. I do it on my nose. So I draw like two little lines on my nose like this. And then I actually take my finger and I blend that in just sort of up and down. I feel like I get the best looking like nose contour bronzer situation when I do this. And then I take the brush, the other end of this brush, and sort of blend out the edges and I get like just like exactly what I want you know nothing difficult this cream bronzer I am obsessed with just love it so much it's so easy to work with you don't have to use a cream bronzer I just like using a cream bronzer and then I set it with a powder bronzer so this is the L'Oreal infallible freshwear bronzer and so I'll take a little brush and sort of tap that over tap that powder bronzer over where i put my cream bronzer so i'm not looking super powdery you know i don't I, even though i'm using a powder this powder is setting the cream bronzer that i just did so it is a powder product so it's setting it but i'm not using a crazy amount of actual setting powder make sense next thing is my blush i'll go in with a cream blush and then i will set the cream blush with a powder blush. That's the idea of like, I'm not using too many powder, like a too much setting powder, so it won't look cakey. So this is the Pixi blush stick. This went viral and it is so oh, freaking gorgeous. What shade is this? Ruby. Same brush, I've used this for my foundation, my played with my concealer on the other end, used it for my cream bronzer. I, you know, you could just kind of wipe it off if you feel like there's excess product, but I feel like this brush is so forgiving. It doesn't really hold on to product that much. It blends it out perfect. Look at that blush. It is so pretty. Just so nice. Like I said, we're mixing high and low here. Pixie. We're gonna set the Pixie blush with a Dior blush. This is that viral Dior blush that has like, it like adjusts to your pH so it looks very shockingly pink, like blue toned candy pink in the pan. But then when you kind of get it on the skin, it warms up and livens up. You could definitely use a glowy blush if you want, but I really love the like flush of pink, even going into fall. You could pair this with a cool toned look and it'll look awesome, or even go a little bronzy with the eye. I'm going more for like neutral. It's gonna lean a little bit more cool tone on the eyes. For some reason, I've been really loving that on the eye lately and it works well with this cooler toned cheek. But you could use a more rosy or peachy toned blush. Like if you're do, gonna do a bunch of warm golds on the eye, you'll really like that. Like a more um, peachier type warm toned blush. So at this point, I'm gonna start on the eyes. You know, I have still haven't done setting powder. There's no right or wrong way to like when you should set your makeup or not. But for me, I wanna let that foundation still sit on the skin and breathe and not be set with powder. I wanna kinda do that towards the end. I wanna do a super simple eye look. I'm using two different palettes because I do want some shimmer on the eye. I think shimmer photographs really well, but you don't have to. So the first palette that I think is so versatile and I think everyone would really like, this is the Makeup by Mario Master Mattes palette. This works really well to kind of create the structure, the contour of the eye. And this is the cool tone palette that I absolutely love from ColourPop. It's called That's Taupe. Let me show you the shades in this one. Very pretty. These foiled shades are just gorgeous on the lid. I feel like they photograph really well and they make my eyes pop. I think a nice like neutral metallic cool tone shade is just really pretty, especially for photos. So I'm gonna do just a quick eye look. So with the Makeup by Mario palette, I'm gonna start with this mid-tone brown to create the structure of the crease. I also hit the lower lash line with that same brush. This is my, what we call our transition shade. 
I'm gonna dip into this cool tone mid-tone brown. That's kind of going on the outer corner and crease and we're going to buff that in. You can go back into that first fluffy brush that you started with to kind of get any edges. Make sure it's nice and clean and blended out. You don't wanna go super duper duper too dark with the eyes. You wanna kind of make them defined and structured and contoured looking, if you will, but you don't wanna go too smoky. If you have an event, obviously, nighttime evening and you want to go smoky go for it but for the purpose of photos you want them to be defined your eyes to be defined but not too sunken into your head so i'm going back into this makeup by mario palette i'm going to grab this neutral brown right here this is going to be the darkest shade that i go into today and that's really kind of just pressed on the outer corner for a little bit of smoky definition kind of see how the difference what that does that shade right there just kind of gives like it's kind of going into the lash line and the outer portion of the crease. I'm also taking this little brush right here and grabbing that and just sort of gently hitting the lower lash line. I do, I'm not going to be using any eyeliner on the lower lash line at all. The definition is coming from the eyeshadow, so it's going to keep the eye open looking without uh, making your eyes look any smaller. I have big eyes, but I do want to make sure that I give tips to make make sure that your eyes are not going to look any smaller in photographs. You could certainly stop here and then, you know, do your lashes and a little bit of tight lining, but we're going to make some poppage. We're going to make the lid pop a little bit with this metallic shade from the That's Taupe palette. Can you see how poppin' that is? And that's just to give like a little reflective shine. Um, if you don't like metallic shadows, definitely skip this. If you, I feel like nobody is too old for a metallic eyeshadow. You know, you could always kind of blend the edges out. I just feel like that gives the nice, the nicest little shine. It's so pretty. And then from here, I don't like full eyeliner on me and I feel like it makes me look older and I try to avoid a lot of eyeliner, but I take this tiny little um, gel pencil from Maybelline. It's so tiny and I do a little tight lining here on the upper waterline. You could also do this after you apply your lashes too, but that's where I'm gonna get the most definition. I'm not gonna do any on the lower lash line. If you like eyeliner, by all means, go for it. I'm just not into it, and I feel like it ages me, and I want my eyes to look awake. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go in with one of my setting sprays. I have two. This one is a dewy coconut setting mist from e.l.f. It kind of melds everything together that I've put on my face so far. And then I'm going to do a long wearing setting spray, which is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I'm gonna use this one at the very end. I like using setting spray multiple times in my routine just because I feel like it melds everything together and then it sets everything in place. But this one sort of takes the finish and gives me such a really like beautiful glow. If you don't like the dewy glowy look, definitely don't use this, you could use a different setting spray, like a matte setting spray. I'm gonna let this dry down and then we will finish off the look. We're almost done. <laughs> Do you see how glowy that setting spray makes the skin? If you're not into that, totally understand, but I love the look of that. I'm now going in with my setting powder on the places that I did not put powder, like you know where my powder bronzer and powder blush are. I wanna make sure that I set my forehead and I'm using that e.l.f. Um, setting Halo Glow setting powder. Um, I'm also doing around the mouth. I'm also making sure to get this area nice and set with the powder. You can see the glowiness is sort of toning down a little bit. Another powder I really, really love that's super lightweight, blurs the skin but is not heavy or cakey is the Kosas Cloud Set. I'll just do that too, because like, why not? That powder, you see how we still have that healthiness coming through on the skin, but it's not incredibly like super shiny. 
I almost like don't feel like I need a highlighter, but I'm still gonna do a highlighter cause I like a highlighter. And that's where we're at now. We're going to put the icing on the cake with my highlighter. This is the Essence Highlighter. This is one of their newer ones. This is in the shade Sun Showers. And I don't want too, too much of a glow, but I'm gonna throw just a little bit up there. Just the tiniest bit. Just a tiny bit on my nose. Just a tiny bit right there. I, I do feel like my skin looks really healthy, glowy, so I don't wanna overdo it on the highlighter. Glowy skin is in, but not metallic beaming from outer space. That is not in. And then at this point, off camera, I'm going to apply some mascara, curl my eyelashes, apply my mascara. This is the Tarte Tubing Mascara. I've been enjoying it lately. I don't find that it's like a super traditional tubing formula, but that's nor here nor there. Anyway, I'm gonna use this off camera, and then I, um, I'm going to give you a tip about eyelashes here in a moment, like actual using false lashes for events and photo and video. We're going out of order because I just really want to have a lipstick on for longer, okay? I, I feel like I do makeup tutorials and then I'm put, putting lipstick on at the very end and you like don't get to see it for very long. So I'm gonna do it now. I am using a high-end and low-end product for this. My lip liner is Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I feel like a lip liner is super important for photos and events because it gives the lips a bit of a contour. It looks great on camera. If you're just using one lip color, it tends to kind of like, I don't know, look a little blah. You get more dimension with a lip liner. And these are pretty long wearing. I like a more long wearing lip when it comes to photos because if I'm with my kids and they like are by my mouth, I don't want lip gloss smearing. I want a more long wearing lipstick that's gonna stay put really well and look really good in photos as well. This is a new lip product from Urban Decay. I can't remember the exact name of it, but I will have it linked below. But they are a shinier finish. They have a more, they look like a traditional bullet lipstick with a little bit of a sheen to it, but they are long wearing. They're not as long wearing as like, say my Maybelline Superstay Matte Inks, but they wear so well. This is the shade Textum. So Iconic Nude is a nice cooler toned lip liner which gives that really nice contour. And this has a little bit more of a rosy tone to it, which I think pairs really well with Iconic Nude because you get that nice contoured outer part of the lip and then you get the rosy lipstick in the inner portion. It's really nice, has a nice sheen to it. It's so flattering. It is pairing really well with the eye and the cheek and it's just like this really fresh look that I have on the face. So, last tip I'm gonna share with you is going to be the false lashes. I feel like you guys can do this. So give yourself some credit. I think a false lash is just the, like brings that look to the next level for photos. Your eyes tend to disappear when it comes to photography and if you have a lash on, it looks so good. Your eyes are gonna just pop and look amazing. But my best advice is to grab a lash which has a really thin, easy, flexible band to work with and then either cut the lashes in half or in this case, I did like a three quarter length lash or two third, I don't know. It's a little more than half that I cut. So I get this little cluster right here and then I have this longer piece. This longer piece is gonna go on the outer corners of my eyes for a nice little lift, a little definition. So when you are applying your false lashes, you wanna make sure that you like line them up on your eyelid first, see where you would cut them and then cut the lash. And then what you wanna use is a brush on a lash adhesive. I promise this is so easy and anybody can do this. I have a couple of half lash tutorials. There's one on my Instagram from a few years ago. I should probably just like redo, but you brush on the lash glue and then you like sit there and wait for like 30 seconds to a minute. If you're gonna put this on your lash line immediately, you're gonna, it's not, it's gonna slip and slide around. You want this glue to get a little tacky. So like I'm talking for like 30 seconds with you, it's gonna dry down. You can just like blow some air on it, let it air out, let it dry. And then you're going to put the lash on the eyelid. I use my fingers. I just place it and then I like wiggle that around into where the spot where I want it and I sort of smush it together with my fingers. You can definitely use like a lash applicator, some tweezers. I just find it easy with my fingers cause it's 
see that just pop right on y'all it's not that hard okay it's so easy and look what a big difference this makes like my eye is popping it doesn't look clown like i can't do a crazy lash with my eye shape it'll make me look like a literal caricature and i understand different eye shapes we like things work differently with us if you have hooded eyes you don't want that eyelash to take up your entire eye so using a nice wispy eyelash and then cutting it exactly to what you want it and placing it on the outer corner is going to give you that really nice definition with and it's comfortable you can wear it all day it's not going to poke in that inner corner of the eye it's not going to flap around just trust me on this okay i'm gonna put the other eyelash on here we are at the end of this i put a i put like a, a fancier shirt on because it's like a fancier makeup look and the last thing we have left to do is the urban decay all-nighter setting spray this locks everything in place it's like hairspray for your face holy grail can't live without it i douse myself in it and we're done <laughs> So here's the final look as that setting spray is drying down. If you feel you are a little too shiny looking in various spots, you can definitely take your powder and kind of tap on top of that. You can even use a powder puff when you're off to your location, bring a powder and a powder puff and sort of touch up spots that you feel might look a little too shiny for you. But I like looking dewy, so I'm okay with it. And so yeah, when you're doing your pictures, make sure you take a little powder and a powder puff so you can kind of touch up spots that tend to look a little worn off. Make sure to take your lipstick and your lip liner with you and you're good to go. And take your lash glue just in case something flies off, but with this, I promise it won't. So I hope this video was helpful for you, that you learned a few new tips and tricks and that this has made you feel comfortable for doing your own makeup for photos or in events or anything you have going on this fall and holiday season. I know we're full of events, our calendars are full to the brim. So hopefully this makeup tutorial will get you feeling like fresh and ready and you know, you can switch out the lip colors and the eye combination and the blush for things that feel more seasonally appropriate pull out the red for Christmas get super sparkly for New Year's whatever you want to do this is just kind of like the base idea this is super neutral I'm gonna use this for like family photos thanks so much for tuning in I will see you guys in my next video